Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and we're going to talk a little more about zippers today. Now, for this uh, tutorial, what I want to do is actually give a brief overview of how zippers work. And I think the best way to do that is to dig into the source code a little bit and to run a couple of functions to just see how they work, right? So to start with, let's start with the zipper um, method. Now this is, uh, if you go and download the closure source, this is in closure zip. And if you uh, pull up the zipper, what zipper basically does is take the input, remember we have the input is branch, children, make, node, and root. Do you remember that from the last uh, episode? And it creates a new zipper off of that. And the zipper in this case is just a vector of um, root and nil in this case. Nil is information about where we are in the data structure. Root is the current node that we are at. And then at uh, attached to that is metadata here. And the metadata contains the different functions that we need to, um, to be able to manipulate this uh, data structure. So uh, if we look here, um, we have z vector zip of data gives us this, right? Now if we do meta off of that, we see here that it has zip make node and so on and so forth. These functions have been attached to it. So because we're at the top, we have two parts here, a pair basically. The beginning of the pair is the node that we're currently at, which is at the top, and then nil, right? So now let's take that and go down. Z vector zip data, Z down. And we get this. So we see here our current node is 1, and then we have this massive hash map here of what looks like um, uh, uh, some weird, really weird information, right? So let's go through these. The L key is the number of nodes to the left of our current node, right? So our current node is um, 1, and there's nothing to the left of it because we're at the beginning, see? So we're at the, the beginning, so 1 is at the left, there's nothing here. Now R is the nodes to the right. So the nodes to the right are 2, 3, 4, and this other vector here. So we see that data right here. The P path is, is parent path. Um, that is currently nil because, um, you know, actually, let's see, when down... Uh, down says path. So this is the previous path, right? The path that we were at currently, uh, at, at before. And we'll deal with that in a little bit. And then P nodes are a vector of nodes going up the tree. So the top, this is the root node, right? So our parent, this is the parent node that we're at. Now, now if we update this node and we do Z, Z update ink, um, it's edit, isn't it? There we go. If we do edit, now we get two, but here the parent node is actually one, right? It, we, it, the parent hasn't been modified yet. Other information that we have here, so that's all there. When we modify the node, you'll notice here that change becomes true. And this is so we don't um, we don't always modify the data structure if we hadn't edited it. This is what I was talking about in the last episode, that if we don't make any changes, moving around these zippers is very efficient. It's just shuffling some data around, right? When we actually have to change things, that's when we have to reconstruct the data. So now if we go and we go back up, Z up, you'll see that this gets changed back to nil because we're at the top. And we have um, this 2 has been spliced in. So let's look it up. What is up do? Well, the first thing we do in this giant node here is we destructure um, all this information that we need. So it destructures this hash map into all the different parts, right? Um, so we take the location and we split it up into node and this information. Now, like I said, this data is pretty, this, this function is pretty old. Um, it's had an enclosure of 1.0. So it's actually possible um, to write this in a much more efficient way. We could rewrite that uh, destructuring as node keys, you know, L, P path, P nodes, R changed as path, right? We could destructure it that way today, but this is the way it's written for now. I'm not sure about the historical part of that. So when uh, P nodes, so we have to have a, so here um, we have to actually be 
um, in a place where we can go up. If we're at the top, P nodes is going to be nil, and we can't go up anymore, right? So we're we're right here when we're down in this one. P nodes um, does exist. And then we look at the beginning of the P nodes, and we we destructure that. We pull that out, and then we say if the parent has changed, if if the node that we're at has been modified, then we need to splice in. Um, the information, and we'll go and look at that. But if not, then we're just going to go up, which is P node and P path, the parent node and the parent path, right? So we pulled it out of P nodes, we have the parent path, and we're we're good to go, right? So this P path is the um, is this part of the data structure for the parent, okay? Um, and then we attach the metadata to it. So each one of these functions has to reattach the metadata so we don't lose um, these functions for how to um, add uh, children and, and that sort of thing, how to create new nodes and stuff. So you can see here how if we rewrote this today, instead of this metadata, we would store this like in a protocol. We Zippers might be actual types, somewhere along those lines, right? So then we call um, make node. Make node is actually a function up here that, um, let's see here, here. So make node just pulls out the make node function and calls it. Um, and uh, it creates a new node. So you have the old node, you have the um, uh, the parent node, and it goes and uh, creates a uh, it it uh, creates the children. Now, now these children, if you look here, it concatenates left and right and sticks node in the middle, right? So so it's taking everything in left um, here which is empty, everything in right, which is here, and sticking this node here, which is one, in between them, concatenating all that together and sending that off as the new children for this node, okay? Um, and then it says, um, and this is, this is stuff for updating the parent path. Um, and let's see here. Um, And let's see, if you've actually modified something, if you've modified a child, then you have to propagate the, uh, tr the, um, uh, propagate the change up through the chain. Okay. So now let's, let's look at something different here. If we go, let's go back to our example of down. And let's do Z right. What we have is 2, 3, 4 is our node. The left is 1, because we have one node to the left or they have the single node to the left, right has one less, and then we have the same parent nodes. If we go to the right again, we'll see now that the current node is five, six, seven, right is nil, and the left is one and two, three, and four. So we can think of what left and right would look like then very easily by, um, we have mit with meta, um, some checks here to see if we're at the beginning or the end. The meta, of course, carries along those functions. And then the new node is, so we do structure out of left is L, right is right and next of right. So our new node is right. We are soch into our, our node information here, a new left, which is left plus our current node. And right is the remainder of right. So we're just we're sh going left and right. It's just a matter of copying the first item from right into node, taking the current value of node and appending it to the end of left. Right. So we're just shuffling data left and right. And what's kind of cool about this when you think about it is that because we're going left and right, we can have left be a vector and right be a seek and they work very well that way because we're adding and removing to the beginning of right and adding and removing from the be from the end of left which follows what those data structures like to do naturally so some people that complain that conj adds on to the beginning of of a seek or to the end of a vector this is a case where that's actually pretty important moving back and forth is a really good um uh way to go about it so then we have various other um functions here that, that are helpful. Um, here's a good one. Um, so edit. 
Add it has a location and a function and a function and an args. And we simply replace the current node with by applying f to the current node, getting the node from location and applying f to it with args. And we see replaced here just replaces this the value here at the beginning of our of our current state vector and associates true into our state our context, if you will, and then carries along all the metadata as well. So that's kind of the cool thing about this whole idea of using um, zippers, is that they're a very um, uh, clean, simple way of traversing these data structures in a way that does not consume stack. So like I said, in fact, you know, um, if we go and we load up walk, here we go. Let's contrast this a little bit with walk. Now, the walk isn't that hard to understand, right? But if you look at walk here, walk calls, let's see here, um, it has function, inner and outer and form. So walk will walk a data structure, right? Now, if you see here, post walk calls post walk, pre walk calls pre walk, right? And, and uh, these, I mean, they work just fine, but because they're calling themselves recursively, see, you know, inner here is going to call inner here, which ends up um, calling, you know, pre-walk over and over and over again. We're going to consume stack, and they'll reach a point where if you dig too far down into a data structure, your stack will blow up. Um, and you'll, you'll get a stack exception because you, you've reached the end of the call stack. That doesn't happen with zippers, and with zippers you can go on and on and on just almost infinitely deep, um, as long as you provide those ways of traversing the data structure. And that's, that's really cool. Um, so let's go back to zip. And uh, let's see here, root. Let's look at root. And so root makes sense. Root just recurs and continues to recur until we're at the top. Um, it continues to call up. It calls up, up, up over and over again until up returns nil and then returns the the current location. And so a lot of this, you know, take a take a look through this code and walk through it. It's, it's kind of cool that. Um, a lot of these really small primitives, you know, once you define left, right, up, down, and edit, almost everything else is, is built off of these things. And so, yes, there's a way that these could be, um, these could maybe run a little bit faster, be a little bit cleaner, uh, but it, it works It works pretty well. Um, if you would like, there's actually, uh, if you search for it, there's something called uh, Fast Zip or Fast Zippers, someone made me aware of, where they went and rewrote this using uh, protocols and uh, records, and uh, apparently it's, it's much faster. Um, but, you know, give that a try if you like it. Um, but uh, what's here works, works fairly well today. All right, uh, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.